that you know if the situation remains the same both the daughters both the twins they are going to die so you know uh, it's really difficult to answer the, uh, to tackle these situations okay so the court said that it should be operated parents were not ready to do that they were saying why should i kill one okay one doctor in order to save the other doctor if you know it is god's will that both of my doctors should not survive why should i intervene but someone filed a petition in the court and court you know they forced them to operate now there are you know multiple ethical factors at, you know uh, attached to this thing that who is the court to decide are getting it okay so whose decision should be final okay so these are nothing but the ethical things the you know the moral conduct in this moral conduct you know this is a standard of right and wrong there that what is right and what is wrong okay and it is the basis of trust in relationship okay so it is standards of curtain, uh, conduct as they pertain to and it you know there are certain guidelines for the morally acceptable use okay of any information or you know, anything right so ethics are nothing but you know the ethical values or the morality okay and what is discussed in ethics is nothing but you know what ought to be done right there is no any you know right or wrong answers to the ethical questions okay for someone it can be right for someone else the same thing can be wrong too okay so it is very very difficult to answer the ethical questions right but you know the minimum concept of morality one can say that you know at the very least okay the minimal minimum concept this is okay morality is nothing but the effort to guide one's conduct by reason okay that is to do what there are the best reasons for doing okay while giving equal weight pardon rational decision yes 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 i'll be i'll be you know if time permits yes casualties okay so if if time permits i will discuss about you know uh, the ethical choices making ethical choices also okay that what are the different ways different approaches to make the ethical choices okay so morality is nothing but the effort to conduct one uh, effort to guide one's conduct by reason okay some rationality has to be there in all your actions okay while giving equal weight to the interest of each individual that is very very important okay who is going to be going to get affected by your decisions okay so interest of everybody who is associated with the decision okay that should be seen this is what we call as the morality and ethics is nothing but the standards of this morality the standards of moral conduct whether you are following the moral values or not that is what is explained in ethics and it is you know one of the branches of philosophy right so uh, enough of ethics we don't have enough of time otherwise you know let it us okay so when it comes to you know research right so the concept of morality is also there and when it comes to academic integrity or research okay research is nothing but the search of new knowledge that is very very important okay research is nothing but the search of new knowledge okay oh again this slide has wrong what to say wrong position okay so research is nothing but the search of new knowledge okay when you are doing research you should answer the question what new you are going to add to the present knowledge domain that is what we call as research okay and it is distinct from the routine application of the known knowledge okay so known knowledge and its applicable is there okay what new are you going to add to it 
that is what we call as the research okay it is to add to the knowledge domain by discovering inventing and creating what was previously unknown okay it is to add okay let, let me see the things in chat okay so it is to add to the knowledge domain by discovering inventing and creating what was previously unknown this is the things you know which are discussed by Dennis Burns okay one of the great persons okay so this is what exactly research means right now you no know, we can summarize it that it is going to add to the previous knowledge mostly building on the works done by the artists okay and in whatever research output you are going to give, okay? So you must show the reader that you are aware of the knowledge, okay? And what others have done. Are you getting it? See that chapter of literature review is there. And in that literature review, everybody is going to discuss that, you know, what is the current situation? What work others have done, okay? And you have to show the reader or the reviewer that you know how you have built your extra knowledge, okay, on the basis of other known knowledge. What extra is there? Okay. So thereby you must show where your work is going to get, you know, getting fit at. You can say that, you know, although this thing is studied, this thing is studied, but what is remaining is nothing but this thing. And I'm going to work on that, you know, that gap. Okay. So that is what should be there in research. And that is why your report necessarily refers to the similar work done by the others, as I told you that, you know, that literature review. Okay. So definitely, no thesis can have the work, okay, done by you only. Every thesis you will find that you know every thesis refers to the work done by the others, and that is important. That is really required because if you tell the reader that you know this is the work already done and this is where my work is going to get fit, okay, it will give better clarity to the reader, to the reader. Okay, so research ethics. So definitely, if this is the research, okay, and we already know what is ethics, okay. So research ethics, if you combine both the things, so research and ethics, they are inseparable, right. So when it comes to research, there are rules and guidelines, okay, wherein what is the misconduct or what, what will be treated as a misconduct and what are the punishments, everything is mentioned, okay. It results into common foundation for research practice. Research ethics is going to result, okay? Some common foundation is there for the research practice. And this foundation is base layer for research ethics, okay? So whatever that, you know, uh, that uh, um, in July in, uh, 2018, okay? So uh, UGC have come up with that circular, okay? The gazette, right? Wherein the academic integrity, PAIP, IAIP, everything has been mentioned over there. Right, so that what should be the punishment if you are not following, uh, you know, uh, academic integrity in your research? Okay, so they have made few slabs, and accordingly, you know, they have uh, they have mentioned the punishment. Too. So it captures the fundamental and sets the boundaries for policy. Okay, so what are fundamentals and how to do policy? Okay, so everything is mentioned in that research uh, research ethics or those guidelines. Okay. So ethical thinking in research has a continuous nature. Ethics cannot be done at the beginning or at the end. That is very, very important. These research values, okay, they are very, very important. Unfortunately, in India, we are talking about plagiarism, okay, when it comes to PhD thesis. Now, PhD is the highest degree. Now, when getting that highest degree, we are talking about research ethics or the ethics. Okay? Rather, we should be, you know, copying someone's journal. Okay? 
is also plagiarism. Are you getting it? And now you know you ask the question to yourself that you know if your teacher has given you some homework, okay? How many of you have copied the homework from your friends? Many of us. Okay? So ethics are going to play a role over there. Okay? Situation is changing. There are people, you know, there are certain schools who are using that plagiarism checking software right at the you no know, seventh or eighth standards also. Okay. So it's very, very important that you know. Uh, ethical thinking it, it is a, it is one continuous process. It should not happen that you know after writing complete thesis, you are saying that whether it is ethical or not, or what is the context of plagiarism? No. While writing every word, okay, you have to take into consideration this research ethics. Okay, and it is not only limited. This question is not limited only until you get the degree. Rather, throughout your career. This question is going to be very, very important. Okay, whether I am following research ethics or not. Ethical questions travel not only to the research process but to the research career as a whole. Which student should I select? Okay, how can I ask the student to write their thesis? Right, so many things are there. Right. And everything should be based on good research, good ethical practices. That is very, very important. Okay, so making ethical choices, there are you no, know, there are different approaches. Okay, one approach is the consequentialist approach. Okay, when in the consequences are very, very important. Right. So this consequentialist approach, okay, is going to focus on the outcome of the choice. What is the outcome of the choice? Okay, that aim justifies means philosophy. Okay, if outcome is best possible, decision is justified. You get me? If outcome is you know, uh, if outcome is best possible, then the decisions are definitely justified. That I'm going to do this, okay, for the good of someone, right? It maximizes intended uh, intended benefits in relation to the unintended harm, right? So if someone is getting harmed, it is ignored. Okay, aake ban ki jati hai. When you talk about the harm, what is seen is this is the benefit that no we have given. Okay, so it is not as simple uh, as it looks. It is pretty complicated. Okay, this approach because you know uh, it's very difficult to understand you know uh, what is harm and what, and what is benefit and what is important harm or the benefit. Okay, and principal approach is also there. Unlike above, you know, focus is on the process than the outcome. That whether process is you know being followed or not. What is outcome? There is different. And most of the systems, okay, at least in India. They are built on this principal approach. Most of the systems, okay. Unlike above, you know, it's based on the rigid rules applicable to all the situation. Okay, there are certain rules. Okay? Those rules must be followed, whatever be the case. Okay, so there are two approaches. One is the kind of divine law. Okay, like. Well, a very simple thing that we should not speak lies, we should not tell lies, right? I teach my students. I teach my forget students, my my children. Okay. At the same time, I should not laugh. Okay. So that is what we call as the divine law. That you know, we have to be a good citizen. Okay. We should not harm others. Okay, so those are the binding agreements after the negotiations. Okay, and virtue approach is also there. It depends more on type of person you are, okay, or what you want to be. So there is nothing but the virtue approach. I you know means virtue approach will differ from person to person. If you are a good citizen or good good human being, you may follow it. Okay, otherwise you may not follow it. Right? Oh. Okay? 
I'm going to focus on the principal approach now. Okay. The rules and regulation that form foundation are based on the general principles. Okay. General principles are nothing but sorry. Okay, scientific honesty, unbiased results without falsification. Okay, so scientific honesty has to be there. Okay, those are the principles, general principles. Okay, carefulness for higher standards and greatest accuracy. Okay, that is, you know, that is very, very important in principle approach. The standards should be very, very high and it must be followed accurately. Okay, it must be followed accurately. That is also there. Okay. Transparency has to be maintained. Okay, so in complete life cycle, okay, life cycle of that you no know, research path, right? So transparency must be followed. That is very very important. Okay, and recognizing achievements of others, so due credit citations and the referencing has to be there. Okay, so uh, you must recognize that you know uh, what are the achievements what others have done. I never felt so big. This thing is, you know, really dangerous, guys. Okay, so ethically sustainable uh, methodology that is also there. Whatever, whatever is there, the data collection design, uh, design with respect to uh, data collection and uh, design. Okay, that we should not harm the animals. You know, you should get get the consent. Okay, that consent form has to be there. That if you are asking the respondent to answer, then you must say that yes. You no, know, this is where uh, yes, I'm going to share your uh, your data with so on so forth. That privacy has to be maintained. So based on that, based on those principles, this principle approach is designed. Okay. At the same time, academic freedom is also given. That you know whatever is the result. Okay, someone may look at the result in one way. Another person may look at the result in another way. So that is allowed. Okay, that is very much allowed. Okay, so uh, academic freedom is also given in this principal approach. Okay, and social responsibility is also seen. Okay, so make research available when it has impact on well being and has adequate scientific quality. Okay, so if you come up with some solution to tackle this COVID 19. Okay, so you must you, know, you must make that research available because the impact value is very very high. Okay, but provided you know it has scientific value, it is very very important. Okay. So why this is research uh, you know research ethics is more important than ever? Okay, there are so many what to say uh, so many reasons why it is important. Okay, so increased number of researchers there is there is one thing. Okay, so the number of researchers has increased tremendously. Okay, research is important cornerstone for the modern knowledge based society. Okay, every nation has understood that if they want to develop, they must encourage research, and that is why they are. Is, you know it is difficult to share the set of traditions and beliefs so someone may say that this is good thing okay at the same time another researcher will say that no 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 this is bad thing right if you are asking the consent from the from the respondent okay and if there are certain clauses which you know which are going to you know uh, make the respondent not to respond Okay, so someone may say that you know what is the harm. I will skip those things. 
I will manipulate my you know consent. Am I audible? Is my audio clear? Okay, okay, okay. Because I got the message that you know uh, there is problem with audio. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, increasing globalization. So, you know, uh, the international aspect that comes into picture. Okay, it is easy mobility. Okay, the students from one university they can travel to the other university and they can you know. Uh, start to uh, doing their research, okay? Because there is uniformity in the equipment and uh, and practices, okay? So ethical dialogue needed in diverse world for making all aware of the research environment, okay? Conducive for quality research, right? And that is why that research ethics be based on the principal approach. Okay, we are talking about principal approach. Okay, so if the rules and regulations are there, and they are same all over the world, okay, the environment is going to be conducive for quality research. Right, and the conducive environment is very very important when it comes to research. Okay, so intensified competition is there; it possesses the risk to play by the shared rules. Okay, so. Risk is there, okay. So if if you are not uh, if you are not uh, really um, if the competition is there, people are likely to take the shortcuts, and that is why the rules and regulation must be there, okay. So with funding, uh, more reviews. So with funding comes out accountability, okay. If someone is funding your research, if there is some distinguished professor, okay. He is supposed to, you know, the senior professors. They he is supposed to, uh, what say, review multiple articles. Okay, because someone is paying him for that. Now, if if government is paying professor, okay, then definitely professor is accountable to give the outcome. And in that case, okay, if the amount of work increases. Then quality is likely to degrade. Okay, so time pressure, oh, time pressure I'm talking about. Okay, so time pressure is going to result into increased challenges related to confidentiality, appropriate criteria, sufficiency of information, and selection of appropriate reviewer. Okay, so that is why. Okay. So to tackle the challenges, challenges of confidentiality, appropriate criteria, it is very, very important to have set rules and regulations that everybody has to adhere to them, to those regulations. Okay. So social impact, there's a, you know, another thing, there are so many things basically, but I'm going to you know, uh, skip the content, the only, what to say, only uh, thing that you have to understand is that you no, know, this research ethics is very very important today. Okay, see earlier it was it, it is not the case that earlier it was not important. It was important earlier also, but the cases were very few that you no know, people are not following the research. Okay, but these days it is you know many people are not following the ethics. Okay, and that is why it is very very important. To compel them to follow their ethics. Okay. Need to quantify social impact is challenging and defining concrete form of social impact is a big question. Concrete. Okay. What is the social impact? It's, you know, it's really a big question. Okay. Research is between, you know, becoming multi and interdisciplinary. Okay. Multidisciplinary research, you know, that interdisciplinary and interdisciplinary research is a no, every university is encouraging them, okay, with that choice based uh, you know, credit system. Okay, so that interdisciplinary approach is increasing even in India also. Okay, but the larger issues like climate change, energy scarcity, and social inequality need 
okay multidisciplinary approach right so earlier that multidisciplinary approach no one used to be interested in that okay as if i'm i'm a physics professor i used to think that yes physics is the only important okay but nowadays everybody has understood that you know certain questions cannot be understood cannot be explained okay by a single domain right so that's why multi disciplinary approach okay is very very important and this trans disciplinary knowledge can be created with researcher from different fields okay when researcher it is from this different field it is not from okay there is spelling mistake okay so if researchers from different fields if they agree on the ethical issues okay like collaboration funding academic credits languages and publications okay see the language of phd in english okay the thesis written for english phd it is far different okay than the thesis okay of management right because you know if there is some home some river okay some mountains okay if you show that picture to the english person okay person of a uh, uh, who is studying english okay english literature so he will explain the picture okay using very different words so if i ask the, if you ask them that tell me something about this home this house okay which is you know situated near this river right he will start with the bird flying in the sky then ultimately you know slowly he will come to that home but if you ask the engineer comment on this home he will talk about the dimension getting a point okay so everybody's language is different okay so uh, that is why it is very very important okay to have common agreement on the ethical issues in this uh, transdisciplinary research okay so formalized doctoral training you know, it is also there the new technology okay changes in researcher lives okay that is very very important you know if someone of uh, uh, someone uh, from you you know if you are doing some phd okay then you can definitely relate yourself to this thing okay so a teacher doing phd right he has to have that work life balance he has to teach in the in the college he has to do the research he has to look into the administrative issues in the college at the same time he has to look after his kids okay he has to give some time for the family members and it is very very difficult so ultimately the time that is remain for the research is very very small okay the social media and networking that was there life is pretty uncertain okay pressure to be more productive and effective that is a, that is a there on everyone okay then research plus administrative work is also there and innovative work needs cognitive space and peaceful uh, conditions that is you know that is very very important okay and this cognitive space and peaceful conditions can be given if everybody is following research ethics okay or everybody is following the guidelines okay which are prescribed by the academic institute okay so internet based research you know uh, is different thing let us keep this topic okay uh, it is very very important plagiarism data manipulation hurt in india's research okay this is the government panel Uh, it is the news published in uh, 2019 uh, so government appointed a uh, panel headed by former iis director okay uh, to overall the uh, research process okay uh, because uh, the panel was saying that the state of phds are far from satisfactory okay so time and again i am you know coming to the quality in research so quality can be maintained only when academic integrity is you know Uh, is followed it's very very important okay in the academics have contributed 30% of all the articles published in various kinds of fake journals between 2010 and 2014 the international consortium of investigative journalists has identified over 11000 fake journals 
during that five year period, 2010 to 2015. Read the committee's report submitted to HRD. Okay, so plagiarism and data manipulation are issues of great concern, which damage the credibility of research emanating from other our institutions. So it's very very important. Okay. So government is also taking it very seriously. Okay. Now when you talk about plagiarism, plagiarism is nothing but you know, most of the times we have that conception that is plagiarism is all about copying the things. Okay. But that copying is not only the copying of words, it is more than that. Okay. To steal someone's work and pass off as your own work. This is what we call as plagiarism. Okay? But it is not only the words of others, rather it is ideas too. If I am telling story in the class, okay, if someone outside the class okay, hears that story and he if he creates okay another story. But in my story, I was describing, I was uh, the situation was happening in a jungle. But in his story, the situation is happening in a city. But overall, the story is same. The basic idea of the story is the same. Then it will be called as a plagiarism. Remember that. It is not only about the copying of words, rather, it is about copying. Uh, what is it? Copying of ideas too, right? So it is about copying of ideas too, right? So to use another's production without crediting the source, this is what we call as plagiarism. Okay, Wang Mai Chaurya, Jala Marathi Mangalata. Okay, to commit the literary theft, if you are stealing someone's li literature, we call it as a plagiarism. To present an idea or a product derived from an existing source as a new and original one. It is already there, okay, but you are saying that no, 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 this is, this is a study which no one has done. I have done it. It is called a plagiarism. Okay, you are not copying anybody's work, but you are saying that this is new one, although you know that this is not new one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I, I'll be, I will be wrapping it up by three. Okay, by three, I will be wrapping it up. Okay, thanks for that. Okay. So, this is what we call as plagiarism. Or changing the words of original text is definitely not sufficient. Okay, if the essential idea of the source is retained and you have not cited the source, this is called as a plagiarism. Very you know, important to note over it. Right? Paraphrasing is not going to help, right? Or you know, changing the words like you know, since independence, India has you know so and so things. But instead of that, you are saying that since 1947. Okay, you are changing that independence to 1947. This is definitely not going to help. Okay? Always remember that, right? So uh, there has to be clear distinction between what is your own work and what is the your analysis of the work done by the others. Okay, the claims of others you were you are reporting. So you know, most of the times what you know, if you read the articles, you will find that you know what I am saying is that if there is some you know some statement made by me, okay, and there are another three researchers who is arguing on the statement made by me. Okay, and there is fourth researcher who is you no know, he who is citing my statement, okay, but not the analysis of others three on my statement. Rather, you know, he is giving me the credit that you know Ankush Kulkarni has said so and so thing in, in his so and so article. Okay, and he may you know whatever analysis of my statement is there made by other three. He is not going to cite it. And he will say that yes, I have given citation, I have given credit to Ankush Kikar. But that is wrong. Because he is copying my statement, at the same time, he is copying the analysis made of my statement by the other three. 
that is why it is wrong okay so there are certain you know uh, certain plagiarism type where sources are not cited okay this is one one what is a category of plagiarism okay the ghost writer is nothing but who is, you know if you are copying the things word by word it is called as ghost writer the photocopy is nothing but you know you are copying the significant portion straight from one source okay the potluck paper is nothing but writer tries to disguise the plagiarism by copying from several sources tweaking the sentences to make them fit together while retaining most of the original phrase okay so he will simply you know he will simply uh, uh, collect the uh, things from different sources and he is going to you know make them uh, stitch together okay so this is also called as you know plagiarism or where sources are not cited okay again this is again the types where sources sources are not cited the poor disguise although the writer has retained the essential content of the source he has altered the paper's appearance slightly by changing the keywords and phrases okay so paraphrasing is also uh, called as plagiarism okay and you are not citing them the labor of laziness you know, this is one funny thing okay wherein the writer takes the time to paraphrase most of the paper okay from other sources making it all fit together so utna time wo agar khud ke research mein laga deta hai to ek naya acha paper laga deta you see no he will take the dictionary and he will you know try to see the synonyms for every other so this is what we call as labor of laziness the self stealer stealer is also there where you know the writer borrowed generously from the previous work okay i came across so many you know cases where in people say that sir this is nothing but my paper you know or this is my work which i have done in my mp okay and my phd topic is nothing but expansion of that mp topic so that's why my peer my infill work has to be part of my phd but that is not accepted at all okay so uh, if you are giving the sources if you are giving the citations then also it is very very important to give the citations properly okay the forgotten footnote uh, put no uh, footnote the writer mentions an author's name for a source but neglects to include specific information okay on the location of material reference that is also very very important you have to give the correct location misinformer is also there when in the writer provides inaccurate information regarding the sources okay so you have to give the clear uh, uh, clear what to say uh, information about the sources otherwise if you are giving the citation still your paper will be considered as a plagiarized one okay to perfect paraphrase the writer properly cites a source but neglects to put a quotation mark or the text that has been copied word for word or close to it so generally the law people okay the students of law they have that you know problem because they say that sir if we don't quote the judgments of the previous uh, supreme court okay we won't be able to write the paper and we are not allowed to change the content of, of the judgment so it has to be there as it is if you change the change the content of that judgment then that can be a crime okay so that's fine absolutely fine but in that case you have to put it in a quotation marks that is very very important okay the resourceful citer the writer properly cites all the sources paraphrasing and using quotations appropriately the catch over here is that the paper contains almost no original work it is just compilation of the words done by the authors there is no any addition of knowledge okay and it is sometimes very difficult to spot such type of plagiarism because you know he has given all sources right the you know the paper is of 3 pages and the citations are of 2 pages there was nothing original is there but someone you know may feel that this is really a well studied article okay so this is what we call as you know uh, the, the resourceful citer the perfect time is also there you know is very so many plagiarism types are there okay so plagiarism it is really serious for its serious so uh, issue okay so do not take it lightly okay just see the news okay which i have gathered okay there are you know i cannot take the names but there are great people okay who has landed into this problem of plagiarism 
okay so never take it lightly and you know they have to you know pay for it right so it is very very important thing okay so see these are the few more news okay this is not only in the research rather in media or in you know uh, in movies also it is happening the story is you know uh, written by someone else and you know in tiran this is one you know famous movie of south okay so court has issued non valuable warrant for the director right so do not take it lightly there are so many news you know oh, this, this principal has to step down right there are so many big people okay who got affected okay due to this plagiarism issue so let's not discuss all the cases okay so plagiarism detection there are you no know, uh, certain things that google is not enough okay so turnitin urkun uh, you know this urkun has converted into original now okay urkun has converted into original okay they change their name is o u r i g i n a l right so urkun and original urkun or original this is one thing you know this is something given by the ugc okay to all state universities right and turnitin is also there okay so uh, there are many things available online but do not go for that in my personal opinion you should not be using it i came across so many cases that sir i had did this plagiarism testing you know using some online software okay but unfortunately see what when you are doing the plagiarism test online on the free software okay why someone should give you something for free so they will take the material from you and they are going to sell it to someone so never go for that you know online softwares right so it's not really good practice okay so most cases how to you know avoid this plagiarism most cases can be avoided by citing the sources now how much cited content can be there in the research material there is one question that academician has to answer okay acknowledge that certain material has been borrowed so you should generously acknowledge that yes this is the borrowed material and this is my own thought on that okay and you should also provide audience with the information necessary to find that source okay if you follow these practices no one is going to catch you in the plagiarism okay what to cite you all you know must be knowing it that you know whenever you use quotes you should cite it whenever you use paraphrases you should cite it whenever you use an idea that someone else has already expressed you should cite it whenever you make some specific reference to the work done by the others you should cite it okay whenever someone's work okay whenever someone's uh, work has been critical in developing your own idea you should cite it so uh, ugc you know the rules and guidelines it says that you know it should not be more than 10% any any research material submitted to university should not have the similarity more than 10% okay there are certain punishments left up to 10 to 40% there is one punishment left for 2 to 60 another one is there okay more than 60% another one is there okay so harsh punishments are already there okay it is not only the student who will be punished rather the guide will also be punished okay so the guide will also be punished that is very very important to know okay so this is how that plagiarism plagiarism checking software is going to work it is going to take the paper from you it has its own database okay of multiple documents right these documents are nothing but the documents of the students documents of the faculty documents available on the internet and even the archived internet is also part of this database so if there is certain content on certain website tomorrow i am going to change that to content so the old content
So see the pattern of appearing of the text. And accordingly, they will give you the result that this is the source and this is the original text. OK? And what is the overall similarity? That is also given in every software. Right? So Urkun, it has you know email-based upload and website-based upload also. Okay, unfortunately due to, to the due to the time constraint, uh, uh, I won't be able to show you the demo. Okay, but this is all from my side. Okay, I'm really sorry, but you know I'm not really feeling well. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Or uh, maybe you can send your questions to Ankush at Unicorn Okay. My mobile number is also given. Okay. So yes. I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay. I hope that you have enjoyed the session. Okay. And we did uh, a wish for the day. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great, great. Okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your guidance. Okay. Now, I would request a, a new guest, uh, Dr. Sachin Kadam, sir, to continue with his session on mentally and later. Thank you, Ankush Kukuni, sir. It was a really nice session. Uh, Bhushan, am I audible? Yeah. Is my screen shared on uh, both the links? Yes, sir, it's visible. OK, yes. So let us uh, resume from our first session. In the last part of the session, uh, we have ended up with the font sizes. So from beautification point of view, I said that we are going to focus only on three things, font effects, color text, and font sizes. and. Uh, we have this is where we paused okay now let us uh, move ahead now as far as structured contents are concerned apart from free flowing text the next important thing which constitutes part of a structured text is list now there are two types of list bulleted as well as numbered so i'm just uh, providing the code for bulleted text first <clears throat> so the keyword here is itemize now let us try to understand how this particular thing is getting reflected I'm sharing the code with you.
I shared the code. Just check how it starts. It starts with slash begin itemize. It ends with slash begin itemize. So anything which starts with begin, as we have said, it has to close with add with the same tag. Now, each item in the list starts with keyword item followed by the text. Now, this is one special thing which I inserted here. Let me just uh, delete it first. Let us see the effect of this. See here. This I will push to the new page for the sake of understanding. Now see, begin itemize, end itemize, and in between there are four items. So this is bulleted list. Now, if I want to create one nested list, that means list within a list. So now say under this gate-based quantum computer. I want to add uh, other list as a nested one. So again, we can go here and inside this, we can create another list. Same format. Okay, so now this way you can go up to any level. Okay, this is the entire code. Code is uh, very much self-explanatory. So I request you to also try the thing immediately. Let's test it in standalone also. We are getting exactly same output. Is it okay? Uh, have you received the code? Have you received the code? Abhushan, has the participant received the code? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, is it working properly? Yeah. So now, once we had our unordered or bulleted list, let us have a numbered list. Now, the difference between numbered and bulleted is just the keyword enumerate. So again, also here, I will do the same thing. I will edit this. The keyword here is enumerate. Review. Now the list is number one. I'll just share the code with you. <clears throat> so itemize for normal list and enumerate for numbered list. Now let us create the nested list, same one, only this time the reference is, it is enumerated. See how the numbering patterns and all these things are changing automatically. 
and all these things are as per the international norms so there is no need to think that means always uh, one question my students ask me so which type of bulleted fonts we shall use which symbol we shall use or how the numbering system should be so now you can just rely on the choices given to you by latex because they are going to follow the standards based upon the document class which we are using so say if you are used a certain document class for a certain article type then all the list will be numbered or the symbols will be used automatically now can i create a list which is a combination of both that means now say for example here i will use itemize this my outer list is an ordered one bulleted whereas my nested one is numerical okay so no issue can i do the reverse Now, one interesting thing here is in this itemize, I can use any symbol if I require to denote or replace the default selection of the bullet. We need to provide that thing in square brackets because it's optional, as already we have seen. Now yes, the symbols are different. Now, can I change it? Yes. Here I'm using this. Here I will use say something like, or you can use some text also. Nobody is stopping you. So here I will use say symbol India. Next. So this entire thing is so flexible. You can create your own uh, symbols or combination of symbols for this particular thing. So this way you can create bulleted, that is unordered lists, ordered or numerical lists, as well as combination of those particular types. And then the depth is also N. So you can go up to N number of depth, but generally uh, level three depth is more than sufficient in most of the cases. So this is how we can provide some kind of a structure to our content to lists and one benefit here is uh, you might have experienced this particular thing while working on MS Word. It happens that sometimes it becomes very difficult to change the type of list which you are hitting, as well as it becomes very difficult to change the spacings. Especially this particular problem happens when uh, you are trying to edit a document which has been provided to you by somebody else. I mean, in that particular case, until and unless you know how to understand those particular symbols given by word it becomes very difficult so here you have full control on working now by the way just uh, let me just uh, check with uh, share with you one thing uh, what we are doing here is see everywhere we are using these tags and uh, i was saying to you that word or any other word processor is also based upon the same principles now for example they are also using tags, but generally those tags are not visible to us by default. You can always uh, make them visible by clicking on this particular button. What you are looking at now is all those uh, tags. Only in this particular case, these are all binary tags, which 
system is introducing whenever you are selecting any other option. So when we generally try to fine tune our documents, the understanding of these particular tags really helps us. But don't mess with these things until unless you are very much comfortable. Uh, the understanding of this particular thing comes handy when in certain cases there will be some line which is not getting deleted at all. You try to delete, but still it is there. That means those are some special scenarios when uh, understanding of this thing really comes handy. Uh, all of you, have you done this particular list experiment? Uh, is it okay? Yes, sir. Uh, shall we move ahead then? Now let's see the second structure that is tables. And now uh, be attentive here. This is one of the uh, tricky things in uh, LaTeX. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep uh, clear the things here so that it will be easier for us to understand. Now here we are going to insert a table. Now, it starts with begin tabular. It's a little bit tricky. So be attentive here what we are doing. In tabular. Okay. So this is fantastic. Like there was itemize or enumerate tabular. That means it will insert a table. Now we need to tell the system how many columns are there okay this is the important thing we need to tell the system how many columns are there or fields are there in that particular table now say for example i have three columns so we type it as three l's small l's one l second l third l and then close the bracket now try to understand here this is not one this is small l. Okay, that means there are three columns in our table. Now, how to enter the data now? Now, enter the data for first row. Okay, that means now if I compile this thing right now, let us see the output. Okay. You are not going to see anything because we haven't entered any information in the table. But table structure is okay with you. So it's a table with zero information. Now let me enter the first row. See what the meaning of this. Each field is separated by one ampersand. So this becomes first field. This becomes second field, this becomes third field. Say so if I was going to use only two fields, then I need to have only two L's here. If I have three fields, there should be three L's. So number of L's and this thing has to match. Now let us see the preview. Okay, now you have three fields here: company, type of computer, and type of qubit. Now we are going to enter next row. This was the heading row. Now we are going to enter data row on next line. So new line followed by other rows. In this case, each row represents one table, uh, one row of table. So this is how our table will look like. I'm just sharing this particular code with you. Try to understand this because understanding table is a little bit tricky in LaTeX. I shared the code.
ओके इज इट डन no we need to draw lines now if you just see it's a plain table now we need to draw vertical lines vertical lines here so what we can do is these three l's are there just put vertical line there symbol on your keyboard right line symbol and now you will see yes we have vertical lines in our table now we need to insert horizontal lines h line wherever you want so this will be our top line check where the h line on line number 24 what to add line break there line break i have added so that was the issue so i'm just sharing this code with you now apart from that lattice gives you full freedom now if you just see if you want to merge say two rows then just don't enter that will by default merge two rows now for example i don't want a line here say i want a h line here and i'm just deleting it so my first two rows will be merged automatically see how uh, full control we are getting of the text or for example now here say i want to give selected uh, horizontal lines selected means or say vertical lines if say i am uh, not providing one line here So now my second vertical line is not there. The reason I have deleted it from my formatting text. If I add it again, that second line will come. Okay. Then say this 
in between i just want to provide say a line below type of computer so i can say c line 2 by 2 the line is present only at this say if i want that particular line between for 2 and 3 then i can change it to 2 by 2 to 3 so this way you get full freedom so i'll just give you one example about that c line so you get full freedom how you are going to merge the fields together in latex so it can be merging vertically it can be merging horizontally you have full freedom here let me just share that particular code with you of c line is it okay are the list and tables are okay yes sir okay. now let us move to the uh, multimedia part of our document now there are some images which we want to put in our article now the very first thing is we need to keep those particular images in the same folder as that of our original text so what i've done is we have our uh, what i will do is i will uh, just uh, take two images so say i have two images and i just copy them in my folder now images can be uh, jpg uh, png or any other image format Uh, latex understands all the uh, popular image formats but ideally it should be in png because it's an open source file format so i have two images so the very first thing is you need to put your images in the same folder that's the first part of inserting any image then the second thing is you need to insert one package graphics where to put the line to use the package in our preamble so preamble means line between document class and begin document so we are going to use the package graphics graphics it ends with x now we are going to use the image so now for example this is where i am going to insert the image now let me first give you one demonstration and then we will discuss the syntax of the image okay it starts with begin figure there is something like h in brackets i will tell you then centering center the image then include graphics width is equal to 1 we'll discuss that thing text width cubit this is the image file name okay no need to give you extension the file name is cubit.png okay file name is cubit.png so give the only first part of the file name here so say if it, if it was at uh, pune.png provide only pune india.png provide only india okay then provide a caption that means the title which should appear below the image so here the title is a block space representation of a cubic 
and then there is a label okay label will be some internal representation uh, at later stage we'll discuss this particular point okay so this is this syntax and now how it appears let us see that is going to be very very interesting one first let me just show you how that image looks like so this is my image okay, this is original image Okay. And where we inserted it, we inserted under introduction. So, under introduction, we expect to see the image, but image is not there. Okay. Image is not there. see. Actually, we are expecting our image before adiabatic computing. So, this is the place where the image should be present, but it is not there. So, where the image is, image is at the bottom. Now, why this is happening? The reason here is the image size is quite big. The image size is quite big and it's an actual image size. So Latex, what it has done, it has copied the image as it is here. The reason width is one. So what we have told the system, use the entire width for the image. So if I maximize this, you will come to know this text width, the entire text width is taken by our image so it has pushed all the images towards the bottom and this is the meaning of that word h h means here but it is optional if you can fit the image put it here otherwise put it at the end <clears throat> and then the caption which we provided it has came here nicely and the image is uh, numbered properly that is figure one now let us play with the thing. <clears throat> now what I'm telling is, instead of one, use half the width of the page, 0 0.5. <clears throat> okay. And now our image is placed at the proper. And see how, uh, see the thinness of the image. Now instead of say 0 0.5, I'm saying 0 0.25. See how beautifully images are shown here. This comes very handy when we are creating <coughs> uh, multi-column documents, articles. That means some article formats, they expect your documents to be in two columns. So that time it becomes uh, a little bit tricky to put over images. So here is one feature which automatically takes care of all these things. So I'm just uh, sharing this code with you. Now here, one thing is, uh, at the start itself, I shared with you that it won't be possible for you to conduct all the experiments using online system. Now, this is one scenario. The reason is you need to have your images in the same folder. And definitely in your online thing, uh, that is not possible right now. So those who are having a standalone distribution like MIGTEX, they can immediately try the code and see the output. Uh, is the uh, figuring is clear? Yes, I just clear. Uh, now let us insert the second image. Let us insert the second image. Now I am inserting my second image here. And I will uh, give the file name. Just copy the file name and uh, put it here. This control. There is. Let us see the output. 
our image is present here and it is automatically numbered as figure two this is fantastic one so we have inserted two figures and we know that we can change their dimensions also now in text we need to reference our figures and this is where that label comes handy now say at one particular place i want to refer to this particular image now for example here itself i want to refer to the image or uh, just uh, select one text say now for example under quantum computing at what particular point yeah here i want to refer that particular image say as per shown in figure here the syntax is very very simple ref in bracket give the label so the label which we are given is figure qubit on page number ref again same one that is qubit see this is one additional line i have added i just uh, it will just share this thing with you You can see the code uh, in the text box. As per shown in figure, reference is a new tag, and then in curly brackets, give the label of the figure, not the caption. Label of the figure on page number. Page ref is another tag. Again, give the. Uh, there, I have made a mistake. It should be figure qubit. Uh, please uh, correct that particular uh, error there. It is figure qubit because that's the label which I have used. Figure. Now let us uh, compile the document. So it has to be uh, quantum computing. Ah, see, the text is as per shown in figure one on page number two. Can you see this? As per figure, as per shown in figure one. See, we haven't. I told the system what was the figure number. We just given the reference through label and the page number also. Now this way now, if I say shift this entire thing, image, this figure. Now I'm shifting to somewhere else. So I'm shifting it towards the end. Now, so this figure has become figure number one. This figure has become now figure number two. And the text has changed to as shown in. Just a minute, I have to update this thing. As per shown in figure two on page number four. Now, this comes very, very handy when we are talking about big documents, which spans across. Uh, pages and across the chapters especially those who have written the thesis they will really appreciate uh, the features like this so i have already shared the code with you so this is how you can refer the images the same technique you can use for referring tables also now can i use this label feature somewhere else yes we can use now, for example now this label I used for uh, referring a figure. I can use label feature to refer the table, as well as I can refer use uh, label feature to refer anything. Now, for example, say this is my section. Uh, this we can do on online also. So let me just 
This is the online. Now, for example, say this is our section. Of section. What I will do here is I will just uh, label it. We just put some text in the section. This section is there. I'm going to label this particular section as say introduction. As far as possible, use the label similar to your uh, content titles. So if a figure is there, use figure dash that figure name. So that will be easier for you to memorize the things. Now, introduction is the section name which I'm using. Now, say somewhere here, somewhere here, say under data analysis, I will say uh, more description is provided in section reference introduction. Let's provide the label on page number, page reference, the name of that section, uh, label, introduction. It's the same thing, no change. Let me just view the thing. And now you will see more description is provided in section uh, and not provided properly. I think introduction on page number. Let me just check. Mistake I have made there. Label I provided properly. Oh yes, uh, one uh, one thing we have not done is we are not you uh, till now provided the numbers, but this should not happen. Okay, page type, section introduction. Yes, uh, we are not yet uh, given the page numbers to the system. So we we'll provide the page numbers. The next point we'll cover that particular thing. This way now you can use uh, labels to reference any part. It may be section, subsection, sub subsections, figures, or tables. To so this provides you linking between the document and now we need to provide set tables of these particular things figure of tables so, so issue is coming because we are shifting between uh, our standalone and online and i'm just forgetting uh, which things i included in online version and in standalone version that's why the linkings are a little bit uh, breaking right now. So what we need to do is, after the make file, that is after the title, say I want to insert our figure listings. So first you need to enable page numbering. You need to enable page numbering. Then the tag is list of figures. Now 
the list of figures. It has came here automatically. We have two images list as well as their page numbers. Now, similarly, uh, I will just share the code with you. I think you may not be in a position to do it in online version because you may not be having images with you. And the next thing is, let us insert table of contents. So before list of figures, I'm inserting table of contents. Let's see how nicely everything has came properly here. So this is our table of content. This was this structure which we created towards the start of the session, followed by list of figures. All these things are there now. Let me just copy this text to online also. it's not working properly the reason is some missing tags are there so as i discussed earlier uh, everything may not work properly on online version due to dependencies <coughs> sorry i haven't covered you to the code Now, Arabic means our normal numbers. Now, again, uh, it makes very easy for us to manage which type of numbering system we want for which section. Whenever you want a different section, instead of Arabic, you can type Roman. The numbering system will be in Roman. Now, for example, I will just uh, make a change here. Say, instead of Arabic, I will say, I want to use a Roman system. Decide to change because it's nullifying the effect. So all your numbers are in Roman system. So this way you get the full freedom about whether to use the Arabic system or Roman number system. How we mix what two, sir? How we mix what two? Uh -huh. Wherever you want to change the system, you can make the things changes there. That means now, for example, here you can uh, create different sections, and for that particular section, you can give page numbering Roman or page numbering Arabic, and for other sections, you can give page numbering Roman or Arabic, depending on your requirement. Now, referencing, uh, let us uh, switch to now Mendeley because this will be there, there will be a little bit overlapping. And uh, this is a particular format which uh, Mendeley will help us to understand in a proper way. Now, we have reached the last part of our uh, lattice discussion that is about inserting references. Now, this is where Mendeley comes into picture. So let me just uh, open Mendeley.
So the website is Mendeley, and uh, already uh, you have been asked to create your Mendeley accounts so, and download and install the Mendeley standalone application on your laptop. So I hope uh, all of you have done this particular thing. Uh, yes, we have, sir. You have done it, no? Yes. Because now to use Mendeley, see, first thing is uh, Mendeley is not open source, but it is free. So you need to create your Mendeley account. Now, Mendeley, as I was discussing in our uh, initial phases, that it's a reference management system. So job of Mendeley is help you to organize the articles. Second thing, help you to do critical reading of those particular things. Third thing, allow you to cite the articles. Fourth thing, create a bibliography based upon your citations. And then we need to integrate our Mendeley with our word processing software. The reason your word processor software is going to add footnotes and endnotes. So all these six things we need to do using Mendeley. Now here, we need to use Mendeley in synchronization with your research authoring tool like MS Word or Latex. So you need to use all these three tools in sync. So don't think that I'm going to use only Latex for all my research writing. Or don't say that I'm going to use only MS Word or only Mendeley for doing my work. No. You have to use all these things collectively as an ecosystem. So once you have opened your account on the Mendeley, now Mendeley you can use in two ways through this site or by installing its client on your machine. Generally, I prefer to use a standalone version of Mendeley, but the advantage is whenever you get connected with the internet, it will sync your data with your online version. Now, what the advantage of that particular thing? So, you know, generally what happens is my students, they face one issue. They are reading, see, uh, research is a continuous activity. So sometimes we are doing some uh, reading at home. And once we go to the office or the institute, we want to continue where we stop. So what happens is we carry everything on our pen drives. So we end up with multiple copies of the same document on multiple machines. And then how to do critical reading. So we end up with taking printouts. But Mendeley allows you to sync all your accounts together. So always you are in sync. So if you are say reading page number three and you have taken some notes, once you go to some other location, you can start where you stopped or paused in earlier case. So to use the Mendeley online, you can directly uh, log into this particular system or you can download from here. Okay. Once you download, you get a Mendeley software. Now, once you install it, I'm mean, installing the Mendeley now. Uh, just uh, be attentive here what we are doing. Okay. Once you uh, already have installed it, so what I will do is. One important step is there, which I would like all of you to know. So that is one of the common uh, questions asked to me by my students. 
Start with installation itself. I think the vendor desktop is already open. I'm not seeing it. Just one minute, there is some technical issue. The system is saying that my medley is already running, but I cannot see its link. Medley is already running. Now, there are two steps. First, you need to create your account here. So, I will just uh, log in into my online version of Mindlet. Go to the library. Now, this is the interface for online thing. Now, this is mandatory. That means you have to have your account on Mendeley. And you need to remember your login ID and password for Mendeley. Now, once it is done, now you come to your installation part. OK. Run Mendeley Desktop. Now, it will start my Mendeley client. And now if we just see, the interface is exactly same. See, this is desktop interface. This is online interface. It's very difficult for you to tell the difference. This is online interface. This is desktop interface. So I prefer to use 
desktop interface. So this is where we are going to focus on. Now, all your articles, they must be in PDF file format. That is another interesting requirement. So what we'll do is, I have just created some articles here. These are nothing but just some uh, dummy uh, documents which I have created. Nothing special about those things. So it contains some random text. Now consider that these are our research articles. These are our research articles. Now, let us understand the working space of Mendeley. This is your main area. So any article will be dragged and dropped here or added, it will come here. Now let me add, create my repository. So it's a reference management system. So I need to first add articles. So this is your add button, go here. I can use all the articles select. Now Mendeley is inserting those articles here. Just check why this is happening. I think some uh, font issue or some issue has cropped up on my system. I don't know why this particular thing is happening. Because our articles are normal text, nothing is there. What I will do is I will uninstall the Mendeley and then reinstall it once again. Other applications also.
let us try to install Mendeley once again. Particularly, one dialog box did not came uh, previously. Hopefully, now this will come. This time also, it has not came here. I don't know why. The reason is uh, when Mendeley will start for the first time on your machine, it will ask for your uh, online login ID. I think it is. Okay. I don't know why it is happening. Okay. Let us, uh, for the timing, let us uh, forget about this uh, font issue. I think you will understand. This font issue, I don't know why it is coming like this. So I have to explore this particular thing. But you will see the things uh, in normal text. And now, when you want to read any text, any article, the article will open here. Or is some it's something mischievous yes, going on here? Because these are not the documents which uh, we are talking about. Delete these things. Yeah, uh, some other document. Maybe in the edit settings. Hmm, what is that? Maybe in the edit edit settings. No, the where I am getting confused is uh, I am little bit worried whether uh, it has been hacked. The version which I am using. The reason is uh, it's a plain document, so nothing should come here. Okay. And why the font is changing? That I am also not getting. Well, it's a plain document, so nothing should come this side. Uh, how many? Yes, yes, you're audible now. Huh, then only, yes, yes, then only this thing should come. Yes. Uh, this is fair. Hmm. Because, uh, okay, okay, then what I will do, okay, I will just uh, use some other documents. Yeah, okay, that is okay. Now. Hmm. Yes, thank you, ma'am. So uh, we have added two documents here now. Mm -hmm. So let me add uh, one more document also here. Let's 
what I will do is I will just uh, oh, drag and drop these articles here. Yeah. Now we have these articles with us. Let's read it first. So now we have two articles with us. Now these are just simple PDF documents which I have, we have added here. Now this is our work area. Uh, hello, Madam, really thank you to you. Now if you just see this side, this is our metadata area. That means for each article, we require some information. Now, if the article is downloaded from one of the digital libraries, recognized digital libraries, the entire metadata will be part of that PDF file. And the main line will automatically identify those particular metadata and fill up all these things for you. Now, what is it? Title, authors, publication, year, abstract, different tags, and all these things. If they are not present, then you can enter these things manually. Now, for example, now here nothing is present. So, say for example, year, year is say 2020. In that particular journal, so say type. So the type is say it's a journal article. Okay, say so it's a journal article. You can select the type. Author, Venkat Raman. Now, journal, name of the journal, say Journal of Quantum Computer. Here, 2020, say volume is five. Issue was say third issue. Page, say 21 to 30. After you can type. But see, at least these things are mandatory as far as our citations are concerned. So always make sure to fill up these particular thing. If they are not present, then for each article, enter this particular data here. Now here say page numbers are not present. So I can put some page numbers, say create. Say volume is say seventh volume, issue is this. Other information is available there. Okay. For this, yeah. Issue is not available, so say issue. Say I will type say April issue. April May issue. So these are not available here. Would love to say pages say up to. Okay. So we have now four articles with us, and for each article, our metadata is there. See, this is the first thing which we have to understand properly. We are talking about reference management. So our references must be discrete and complete. So which things? First, what type of document we are talking about, whether it's a book, whether they are conference proceedings, whether they are journal articles. At least we must be very much clear about these three things. Then title of the article, authors, name of the journal or name of the book or name of the conference. Okay, Pages. So at least these items so must be there as far as metadata is concerned. Uh, Bhushan, can you just uh, mute other participants? Not all. Okay, that disturbance is over. Yeah, that disturbance is over now. No issue. So let us understand this is the first working area where you are going to put your documents, all your articles. This is the area where you are going to enter the metadata. So our first part is done. Now, after this organization, we need to do some critical reading. Now, critical reading means while reading, we want to take the notes. So now you come to the notes. And now, say I am reading this particular article. I can double click on this and the article will open here itself. Or say I want to read this article, you double click, the article will open here itself. And while reading itself, now I can take the notes. I can highlight the things. I can color the things in different way. This is something like we are underlining the things. And while doing this, I can take the notes. So now, for example, I'm here. 
I want to take a note. See, enter the note. This is important for my research work. Now, see here your note is there. It is something like you are uh, jotting down your notes in the margins of your printout. And that note is here. Now, similarly, you may be at say particular this particular page. Now, while reading here, you want to insert a note. I can work on this. Now say this side, you have two notes now. Now this is the note number one. I can directly go there. This is note number two. I can that means now it is something like you are jotting down your notes in the margins. And then your collective understanding or your summary of this particular uh, research article or how this is relevant to your work, you can type here. This article is relevant to my work because so and so. And this forms the crux of your literature review. 